What if I told you that spending $5,000 on backup power could be a complete waste of money, while a $500 solution might be all you actually need? When the grid goes down, you'll have exactly zero time to figure this out. In this video, I'm breaking down the exact framework for choosing a solar generator that matches your needs, not what some salesperson wants you to buy. You'll learn the five power tiers, how to calculate exactly what you can run, and how long your devices will actually last during an outage. Stick around until the end because I'm sharing a free calculator that does all the math for you. No guesswork, no overspending. Welcome to Prep Pantry, where we cut through the noise and give you practical, actionable advice for real-world preparedness. If you're serious about being ready when it matters, hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss our content. Before you even look at a single solar generator, you need to answer one critical question. What do you absolutely need to power when the grid goes down? This single question determines everything, your budget, the size of your unit, and whether you're making a smart investment or throwing money away. Most people get this wrong. They start by looking at specs and features without knowing what they actually need. They see a unit with massive capacity and think bigger must be better, but then they're stuck with something that's overkill for their situation. Or worse, they go too small and can't power the essentials when an emergency hits. This is what I call essential home backup. It's about identifying the most critical things you need to get through an outage or emergency. For some people, that's just a fridge and internet. For others, it's medical equipment or a sump pump. There's no one-size-fits-all answer, and that's exactly why you need to start with this question. Let's break down four critical factors you need to consider. First, your essential devices. Are we talking about just keeping your phone charged and some lights on? Or do you need to run a refrigerator, medical equipment, or maybe a well pump? The difference between these scenarios is massive. We're talking hundreds versus thousands of dollars. Second, your living situation matters more than you think it might. If you're in an apartment, your needs are probably straightforward. Router, lights, laptop, maybe a small fan. You're not worried about powering an entire house or keeping a sump pump running. But if you're a homeowner, especially with a family, you might need to cover kitchen appliances, water pumps, or security systems. Third, think about portability. Will you be traveling with this unit, taking it camping or using it in an RV, or is this going to be a semi-permanent solution that sits in your garage or basement? Portable units are great for flexibility, but they usually sacrifice some capacity. Larger units give you more power, but aren't something you'll want to haul around. Fourth, let's talk about budget. How much are you actually willing to invest right now? A smaller, affordable unit that you can buy today is infinitely better than waiting and saving for some dream setup that might never happen. You can always expand later, but you can't go back in time and prepare for an outage that's already hit. Now, let's talk about how solar generators actually work. Unlike traditional generators that burn gas or propane, solar generators harvest energy from the sun through solar panels and store it in batteries. You can also charge them from a wall outlet when the grid is up. Then when you need power, you just plug your devices in and draw from that stored energy. The beauty of this system is that with sufficient sunlight and solar panels, you can theoretically provide power indefinitely. No fuel runs, no dependence on gas stations that might be closed during emergencies. It's clean, quiet, and renewable. When you're evaluating solar generators, you need to understand capacity and output. These are not the same thing, and confusing them is a costly mistake. Capacity is measured in watt hours, written as WH. This tells you how much energy the unit can store. Here's the simple formula you need to remember. Take the capacity of your generator and divide it by the total wattage of the devices you want to run. That gives you your runtime. So if you have a 1000 watt hour generator and you're running devices that use a combined 54 watts, maybe a light bulb and a laptop charger, you can power those devices for about 18 hours. But capacity is only half the equation. You also need to look at output capability. This is measured in watts and tells you how much power the unit can deliver at once. Solar generators list three key numbers, continuous output, surge output, and UPS or EPS capability. Continuous output is the maximum watts the unit can deliver continuously. This is your most important number. Surge output is the temporary spike in power needed to start devices with motors, like refrigerators or fans. And UPS stands for uninterrupted power supply. This switches over in under 10 milliseconds. EPS is emergency power supply, which switches in under 30 milliseconds. One more critical tip, you don't want to run your devices at maximum output all the time. Running at 50 to 70% of the maximum is much better for battery longevity. Let's also talk about battery chemistry. 
There are two main types, lithium ion and lithium iron phosphate, or LFIPO4. Lithium ion batteries are lighter, but they only give you about 500 charge cycles. LFIPO4 batteries are a slightly heavier, but they give you around 3,500 charge cycles. They also handle heat better and are more stable overall. Most newer models use LFIPO4, and it's the clear choice for durability and reliability. Now let's get into the five power tiers. This is where you'll start to see exactly which category fits your situation. Tier one is your entry level solution with 300 watts of output. A typical example would be something like the Jackery Explorer 300. You're looking at around 293 watt hours of capacity and 300 watts of AC output. This tier is perfect for charging phones, tablets, cameras, and running a Wi-Fi router. It's ideal for apartment dwellers, travel, or camping. You can charge it with up to 100 watts of solar input. The big advantage here is that it's lightweight and affordable, in the $300 to $500 range. If all you need is to keep your essentials running during short outages, communications, lights, maybe a small fan, this tier gets the job done. Tier 2 is where you start getting serious value for home backup. This is the 1500 watt hour output category. A solid example is the Jackery 1000 version 2. You're getting around 1.1 kilowatt hours of capacity and 1500 watts of AC output. This tier can handle your router, laptop, lights, and even a refrigerator for about a day. Solar input goes up to 400 watts, which means faster recharging when the sun's out. This is the sweet spot for a lot of people, especially remote workers or apartment dwellers who want more than just basic coverage. The price range here is typically $800 to $1,000. Tier 3 is your entry level for serious backup at 2200 watts of output. Think of something like the Jackery 2000 version 2. Capacity jumps to around 2.1 kilowatt hours with 2200 watts of AC output. Now you can power fans, lights, lights, Wi-Fi, and a refrigerator for up to two days if you're smart about rationing your power. You're looking at $1,500 to $1,800 in most cases. Tier 4 is advanced home backup with 3,600 watts of output. An example here would be the Jackery HP 3000. You get around 3.1 kilowatt hours of capacity, 3,600 watts of continuous output, and a massive 7,200 watts of surge capacity. This means you can handle kitchen appliances, RV setups, and extended home backup scenarios. Solar input jumps to 1,000 watts, and these units typically come with app control. Price range is $2,000 to $2,800. Finally, Tier 5 is your whole home backup solution at 7,200 watts of output. The Jackery 5000 Plus is a good example. Starting capacity is around 5.1 kilowatt hours, but you can expand this up to 60 kilowatt hours with extra batteries and units. With 7,200 watts of AC output, you can run your kitchen, multiple home circuits, and build real whole home resiliency. The price runs from $4,500 to $5,000 for the base unit, up to $10,000 with full integration. Here's what's critical to understand. More expensive doesn't always mean better for you. The key is matching the unit to your actual needs. That tier one unit at $300 to $500? For someone who just needs phones, lights, and Wi-Fi, it's perfect. Spending $5,000 on a tier five system would be ridiculous overkill. The mid-tier options, particularly tiers 2 and 3, offer the best value for most households. You get enough capacity to handle essential devices, enough output to run appliances, and you're not breaking the bank. Let me give you a practical example of how to calculate what you can actually run. Let's say you want to power a standard 18 cubic foot refrigerator during an outage. A frizz like this typically uses about 100 watts per hour when it's running. If you want to run your fridge for 6 hours, you need 600 watt hours of energy. That's 100 watts times 6 hours. If you have a tier 3 unit, like the Jackery 2000 version 2 with 2100 watt hours of capacity, you can easily handle this. After 6 hours, you'll still have about 1360 watt hours left. But what if you want to run that same fridge for 24 hours? Now you need 2400 watt hours. Your 2100 watt hour generator can't handle that. This is exactly where the calculator comes in handy. It flags these issues before you make a costly mistake. The calculator lets you input different devices, their wattages, how many you have, and how long you want to run them, and it instantly shows you if your chosen generator can handle the load and for how long. This tool includes data for many brands and models, and it's completely free. Let me walk you through another scenario. Let's say you're working from home during an outage. You need your router at 10 watts, your laptop charger at 45 watts, some LED lights at 20 watts total, and a small fan at 50 watts. Add that up, 125 watts total. If you have a tier two unit with 1100 watt hours of capacity, you can run all of this for almost a nine hours straight. That's a full workday. Now let's look at a more demanding scenario. You wanna keep your fridge running at 100 watts, lights at 30 watts, router at 10 watts, and a box fan at 100 watts. That's 240 watts total. A tier three unit with 2100 watt hours of capacity gives you about eight to nine hours of runtime for all of this simultaneously. But here's where strategy comes in. Your fridge doesn't need to run constantly, it cycles. If you're smart about opening it, you can stretch that time significantly. 
By managing your loads and cycling devices on and off, you can make that same generator last for days instead of hours. Brand reputation matters more than you might think. The solar generator market has exploded with new brands and many of them are offering tempting prices. But in an emergency, reliability is everything. Off-brand units often have poor quality control, sketchy customer support, and batteries that don't last. Established brands are more likely to honor warranties and provide long-term support. Another feature to consider is expandability. Some units allow you to add extra batteries to increase capacity. This is incredibly smart if you think your needs might grow over time. Maybe you start with a base unit that covers your essentials, and then later you add a battery pack to double your capacity. Charging capability is another critical factor. Check both the solar charging rate and the AC charging rate. Faster charging means less downtime during outages. On the solar side, higher wattage input means faster recharging from panels. A unit that can handle 1,000 watts of solar input will recharge much faster than one limited to 200 watts. Many newer units also come with app connectivity via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. This lets you monitor your power usage, adjust settings, and even control charging speeds remotely. Let's circle back to the cost breakdown. Entry-level units in Tier 1 run $300 to $500. Mid-tier at Tier 2 runs $800 to $1,000. Upper mid-tier at Tier 3 is $1,500 to $1,800. Advanced Tier 4 systems run $2,000 to $2,800. And whole home Tier 5 systems start at $4,500 and can go up to $10,000 with full integration. The temptation is always to go bigger, but resist it unless you truly need that capacity. Start with what you need now. You can always add capacity later. Solar panels matter as much as the generator itself. If you're planning for extended outages, solar charging is absolutely crucial. Your generator without panels is just a big battery that'll eventually run dry. With panels, you have the ability to recharge and keep going indefinitely. Most manufacturers offer panel bundles with their generators, or you can buy panels separately. The key is matching your panel wattage to what your generator can accept. Unplug from the grid and power your essentials from your solar generator for a day. See what works, what drains power faster than you expected, and what adjustments you need to make. Testing also helps you develop power management strategies. You'll learn that running everything at once drains your battery fast, but cycling devices stretches your capacity significantly. One of the smartest strategies is starting with a smaller unit and building up over time. Maybe you start with a Tier 2 system that covers your basics. Six months later, you add solar panels. A year after that, you add an expansion battery. This approach spreads out the cost and lets you learn and adjust as you go. Let me give you one final comprehensive example. Imagine a three-day power outage in summer. You've got a family of four and you've identified your essentials, refrigerator, lights, fans for cooling, router, laptop, and phone charging. Your refrigerator uses 100 watts when running, LED lights totaling 30 watts, two box fans at 100 watts each, router at 10 watts, laptop at 45 watts, phones charging at 20 watts combined. That's 405 watts if everything runs simultaneously. A Tier 3 generator with 2100 watt hours gives you about 5 hours of everything running at once. But you're not running everything simultaneously all the time. With smart power management, you can stretch that 2100 watt hours to last 24 hours or more. Add in 400 watts of solar panels, and on a sunny day, you're generating enough power to recharge a significant portion of that capacity. Over three days with good sun and careful management, you make it through comfortably. This is realistic, achievable preparedness with a Tier 3 system for around $1,500 to $2,000, including panels. The calculator makes all of this easier. Instead of doing math in your head, you just input your devices and scenarios, and it shows you exactly what works and what doesn't. You can try different combinations and see the results instantly. It also helps you identify power vampires, devices that draw way more power than you might expect. The calculator lets you see these trade-offs and make informed decisions. At this point, you should have a clear picture of what solar generator tier makes sense for you. Here are the key takeaways. Start with your essential needs. Don't buy based on specs, buy based on what you actually need to power. Don't wait for the perfect setup. A smaller unit now is infinitely better than a dream system you're still saving for when the emergency hits. Match your budget to your tier realistically. Entry-level and mid-tier units offer excellent coverage for phones, lights, and internet. Upper-tier models provide robust backup for multiple devices and longer durations. Pair your generator with solar panels if you're preparing for extended outages. The generator alone is just a battery. The panels give you renewable recharging capability. Use the calculator. Play with different scenarios until you know exactly what your chosen unit can handle. Stick with reputable brands. In emergencies, reliability and support matter more than saving a few bucks. Consider battery chemistry. LIFEPO4 gives you longevity and stability that's worth the investment. 
test your system before you need it, run drills and develop power management strategies. Remember that expandability and scalability are your friends. Build your system incrementally and grow as your situation evolves. Solar generators are a game-changing addition to any emergency preparedness plan. Unlike gas generators, they're clean, quiet, renewable, and don't require fuel stockpiles. They can provide power for days, weeks, or indefinitely with proper solar input. But like any tool, a solar generator is only as good as the planning behind it. A $5,000 unit used poorly is worthless. A $500 unit used strategically can be life-saving. The difference isn't the specs, it's understanding your needs and matching the right tool to the job. When the grid goes down, you don't want to be figuring this stuff out in the dark. You want to have a plan, tested, and ready to deploy. That peace of mind is what preparedness is really about. So here's your action plan. Sit down and make your essential home backup list. Be honest about what you truly need. Calculate your wattage requirements. Then look at the five tiers and identify which one covers your needs with some room to spare. Check out the calculator and run your scenarios. See what works, what doesn't, and what trade-offs you need to make. Then set your budget and make your purchase from a reputable brand. When your unit arrives, charge it up, run a drill, and learn how it actually performs. If you can swing it, add solar panels right away. If not, make that your next purchase. Then start thinking about expansion based on real-world experience. Share this knowledge with your family or household members. Everyone needs to know how to use the system, where it is, what it can power, and what to do during an outage. The time to prepare is now, before you need it. Climate events, grid failures, accidents, they don't wait for convenient times. But with the right solar generator, matched to your needs, paired with solar panels, and backed by knowledge and planning, you can face these challenges with confidence. That's what real preparedness looks like. Not panic buying the biggest unit you can't afford, not waiting for someday, but taking action now, making informed decisions, and building a system that actually works for your life. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and subscribe to Prep Pantry. We put out practical, actionable preparedness content regularly. Check out our other videos on food storage, water filtration, and emergency planning. The link to the free seller generator calculator is in the description. Grab it and start planning your setup today. If you have questions or want to share your own experiences, drop a comment below. Stay safe, stay prepared, and remember, the right tool for your specific job beats the biggest specs every time. We'll see you in the next one.